So let's say we have a log that is a perfect cylinder and it falls into a body of water and no one's there to hear it. Does it make a noise? Um, there's not really an answer to this question. Some people would say yes and some people might say no. But let's say that this perfect cylinder of a log uh, is floating in the water and we happen to walk by it. Could we calculate its density? So we have our log here. And it's going to be at a length of L, a radius of R, and the water level is going to be at some distance H from the top of the log. So how could we go about calculating density given these three parameters? Well, if we know anything about buoyancy, we know that the weight of the water displaced has to be equal to the weight of our object. So our weight of our water, so the mass of our water, times the acceleration due to gravity has to equal the mass of our log times our acceleration due to gravity. Those g's cancel. And we're given the mass of our water that's displaced has to equal the mass of our log. And what do we know mass equals? Mass is density times volume. So we know that the mass of our water will be equal to the density of our water times the volume of our water that's displaced. And that will equal the density of our log times the volume of our log. And yeah, that's how you could find the density of the log given those couple parameters. Um, but it's not quite that simple. How, how do we figure out the volume of the water that's displaced? The volume of the log's easy. We can calculate the cross-sectional area of pi r squared and just multiply it by the length. But to find the volume of our water here, this would be our cross-sectional area. How would we calculate this and multiply it by L to get our volume. Well, if we take a look at it completely, we can just subtract this smaller piece from the total to give us this bigger piece. So the area, a cross-sectional area of our water is going to be equal to the total area, cross-sectional area, minus the cross-sectional area of the log that's out of the water in the air. Ta -da, then we can just multiply that by L, get our volume, and find the density. Um, but we also need to find the cross-sectional area of the air. How do we find that? So, because we can't just subtract that, we need to do something a little bit different. Let's blow up our cross-sectional area a little bit look at it like this. So how can we find this area? Well, let's, we have a radius going that way. Let's draw a radius going this way. And what's this look like? It looks like, to me, it looks like we have a big pizza and we're looking to find a slice. Uh, and now we have two pieces of a total area that we can find. So now to find our area of our air, it's gonna be equal to the total area of our, of our piece, our section, minus the area of this triangle right here. How could we find uh, the area of the whole section? Well, um, we can find the percentage of its area that it takes up completely of the whole area and just multiply it by the total area to give us the area of this section. So if we wanna find the, uh, the ratio of area that it takes up, we need some angle here, theta. So if we're working with our angles, we know that uh, if we were to take an angle 
for this entire thing, the total radiance of a circle is two pi. So our ratio will be two theta over two pi. Those two's cancel and we're given theta over pi. That's our ratio. So we just need to find theta divided by pi and then multiply it by our cross-sectional area. And that will give us our total area of our section. So theta, using a little bit of trigonometry, uh, the inverse cosine of our adjacent side minus our hypotenuse. So if we just put that under pi, we get and then multiply it by our cross-sectional area, pi, r squared. These pi's cancel, and this is going to be equal to our total area of our section. So there, we found our first part that we need in order to find the full thing. So now we need to find the area of this triangle. Pretty easy, we know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So our base, right there with x. So if we have one half, our base, which would be two x times our height, r minus h. These twos will cancel and we're just left with x times r minus h. So now we just need to find x and using Pythagorean's theorem, we know we know two sides, we know one side, and we know the hypotenuse. So we can find the last side just doing Pythagorean's theorem x squared equals our hypotenuse squared minus our other side squared. So x will equal the square root of r squared minus r minus h squared. Um, and then we can just rearrange this and we can get x is going to be the square root of r squared minus r squared plus 2rh minus h squared. Um, I just expanded, uh, I just expanded this right here to get this. These will cancel and I'm left with x is going to equal the square root of this moves. No way. Hold on. All right, I got a little bit distracted. Oh, that's sweet. 2rh minus h squared. So that's my x. So plugging that back into the find my area of my triangle part. Left with uh, r minus h times my x, so times the square root of two r h minus h squared. There. I got my second thing I need now. Now I can just subtract these two things and find my area of my air. So the area of my air is going to equal the uh, r squared times the inverse cosine of r minus h over r minus r minus h times the square root of 2r h plus minus h squared. There, now I have another, I have my final part to that. Now I can find 
my water because I know my total area, which is just pi r squared, just pi r squared. Um, so the area of my water is going to equal pi r squared minus the area of my air. And that is the cross-sectional area, this area that is covered in water. And if I want to find my volume of water, the volume of my water would just be the cross-sectional area times L times the length. And that'll give me the volume. So now I can plug plug into here and find the density of my log. So density of water, which is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, times my cross-sectional area of my water. times the length, and there. That gives me my left side of my equation, and that is going to equal density of my log times the area, cross-sectional area times the length to give me my volume on my log. And these L's are gonna cancel, and if I just divide over by my uh, cross-sectional area of my log, pi r squared, then I have um, just the density on the right side, and this is the density of the log. And that is how you can find the density of the log that's floating in the water. Pretty, pretty, pretty neat stuff right there, huh?